On today's show, the Chidemo standard gets another threat to its survival as France changes legal framework on EV charging provision, full off-road specifications for the Hummer EV get revealed, and how price parity between internal combustion engine vehicles and EVs might only be six years away. These stories and more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar, and we are the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thank you for joining me. For more than a decade, the Chidemo standard of electric vehicle fast charging has helped countless electric car drivers cover long distances without waiting hours for their cars to recharge. Developed in Japan through a partnership between energy companies and automakers, it is still the de facto charging standard there, and it can support two-way power transfer, essential for vehicle-to-grid connectivity. But in recent years, we've seen more and more automakers move away from Chidemo, leaving the standard very much unloved. This week, the latest nail in Chidemo's coffin came from France, where the government removed a legal mandate requiring all charging providers to support the standard. Over in the United States, we're hearing rumblings that some established Chidemo networks are being quietly dropped as well, which makes us very sad. We want EV charging for everyone. The US National Transportation Safety Board has issued a preliminary report into the tragic crash that occurred in Texas last month in which two men died in a Tesla Model S. While the NTSB did not say what it believed the ultimate cause of the crash was, it stated that while the Tesla Model S was equipped with autopilot, using it required both traffic-aware cruise control and auto steer systems to be operational. Tests the agency carried out at the accident site with an identical car showed that traffic-aware cruise control could be activated, but not auto steer. This initial report proves autopilot could not have played a part, but it does not discount driver fault and confusion over autopilot. Pilot. The NTSB investigation continues with the help from local police NHTSA and Tesla, with a full report expected in due course. As it continues to prepare for full-scale production of its first all-electric truck, GMC has published more teaser video of its Hummer EV pickup undergoing off-road testing at the world-famous Moab off-road venue in Utah. At the same time, it published a full list of off-road specs for the high-end EV, including its maximum ground clearance with optional extract mode, 15.9 inches or 404 millimeters, an impressive 32.2 degree breakover angle, and the ability to wade at up to 32 inches, 813 millimeters. While the Hummer EV does come with single pedal driving as default, GMC says you can opt for a more traditional two pedal braking setup for off-road navigation of the toughest terrain. Lordstown Motors has been promising us for some time that it would begin production this year of its first electric vehicle, the Lordstown Endurance Pickup. But as we've covered plenty on this channel, its promises haven't seemed to tie up with reality, with prototypes catching fire, very little media exposure to its vehicles, and most recently, the retirement of a prototype Endurance just 40 miles into a 280-mile off-road race in Baja, California. Now it is the subject of an SEC investigation, its stock has dropped to just $8 per share, and it's starting to look like it will become the next company to enter into the history books as one that never actually brought a vehicle to market. As the New York Times reported this week, Lordstown's rise was boosted by investors eager to kickstart the next Tesla, but quote, Lordstown's lack of seasoning should have been apparent. Mercedes-Benz has officially unveiled a brand new concept car in the form of the Concept EQT, a new small van that parent company Daimler hopes will help it appeal to families and outdoor types. Smaller than its existing EQV minivan, the EQT Concept features sliding doors on both sides of the vehicle and can seat seven, reminiscent of the Renault Kangoo or Nissan EMV200 Avalia in terms of proportions. It offers a seven-seat alternative to increasingly popular mid-size SUVs SUVs and crossovers coming to market. Being a concept, the interior is more focused on design than day-to-day -day practicality, but like previous EQ concepts, from Mercedes-Benz we can certainly see a vehicle that could enter into production. At least we can in Europe. US buyers aren't interested in minivans as a whole. 
A decade ago, Renault was the first automaker to dabble in the concept of battery swapping, working with Israeli firm Better Place to design and build an electric version of its Fluence sedan that could have its battery pack swapped out at a robotic swap station. The history books know how badly that went for Better Place, and for Tesla in fact, which also dabbled in the same kind of battery swapping idea. But in the light of other companies successfully operating battery swap stations, NIO comes to mind, Renault's CEO hinted this week that he's open to the idea of revisiting battery swapping technology for Renault's EVs, stating, quote, It's not decided, but I see it as an interesting opportunity, end quote. Given a decade's worth of advancements in this area, I'm eager to see what happens next. Ford has announced that it will be providing new over-the-air software updates to F-150 pickup, Bronco and Mustang Mark E customers this year. Called Ford Power-Up Software Updates, Ford says the updates will improve connectivity and add additional features. Among them will be Ford's recently announced Blue Cruise, a semi-autonomous driver assistance feature that's very similar to Chevrolet's Super Cruise system. Unlike Tesla's Autopilot, which operates on most US roads, Blue Cruise will operate on only around 100,000 miles of highway, but it doesn't require the driver to hold the wheel, only remain attentive to the road ahead. In addition to Blue Cruise, Ford says it will be introducing Amazon Alexa integration into all of its power-up compatible cars this fall. When buying a new car, it is common to have perks and incentives offered by either the dealership or the automaker in question to help you have confidence in your purchase. And at one point in time, automakers regularly offered either car club membership or rental perks for short-range EVs. These days, such perks aren't offered much because most new EVs can easily do several hundred miles or kilometers per charge. But Nissan North America has just started offering customers credits for the Turo peer-to-peer -peer mobility platform when they buy their new Nissan LEAF. The idea to help customers who need to make long-distance trips and don't want to take their LEAF. While it sounds good on paper, I can't help but wonder if this is designed to eliminate concerns over the LEAF's slow charge time and poor sales in recent months. What do you think? Electric cars might be cheaper to operate and own over the long term than their internal combustion engine counterparts, but stick a price parity when a new EV costs the same as a new petrol diesel car has long been a goal for the EV industry. Now, a new collaboration between transport and environment and Bloomberg New Energy Finance predicts we're tantalizingly close to that price point. At least, we are in Europe. Taking into account the falling price of battery packs, the effects of economies of scale, and government incentives, the two organizations estimate that we'll see electric vehicles sell for less than fossil fuel cars in Europe sometime between 2025 and 2027. If that can be achieved and EV charging networks expanded, there really will be zero excuses left not to go all electric. If you've watched this channel for a while, you'll know that we've got a soft spot for Turbo the Otter, mascot of Harbour Air in Vancouver, BC, Canada. That's partly because he's a sweetie, but also because Harbour Air has been busy testing a prototype all-electric seaplane for use in its fleet. This week, the company confirmed a partnership to certify the e-Beaver, the electric Beaver seaplane, for full commuter airplane service. It and its partners will collaborate with Transport Canada to retrofit all of its fleet with Magnix electric propulsion units and H55 battery packs. It will become the first all-electric commercial air fleet in the world. That's on top of being the largest seaplane airline and, of course, having the best little otter on staff. <laughs> oh, yes, he is. The Tesla owner who rose to fame last week by engaging Autopilot in his Tesla Model 3, then sitting in the back seat while it drove him around the San Francisco Bay Area, was arrested midweek, then promptly released. Pram Sharma, 25, was arrested and charged with two counts of reckless driving, but immediately after being released, he rode in the back of a friend's Tesla doing exactly the same thing that got him into trouble in the first place. Then he purchased a new Tesla because his old one was still impounded and continued to taunt his critics and the police in front of the media, telling reporters that he was rich as, insert expletive here, this thoroughly unpleasant individual is not only risking the safety of others, but risking the very future of Tesla's and other companies' autonomous vehicle programs. 
We really hope a local judge sees his disregard for the law and puts an immediate stop to his reckless behaviour. And finally, if you live in the US, you are probably familiar with how laughably easy it is to get a driving licence in some states. In fact, frankly, it's laughably easy to get a driving licence in many countries around the world. But in others, like the UK and China, for example, the licence you get can impact what type of car you can drive. If you take your test in an automatic car, for example, you're only allowed to drive automatic cars. And if you want to drive a stick shift, aka manual, you need to take your test in a manual car. And while the world of EVs means you're less likely to need a manual license, some folks may need it for work-related reasons, which is why BYD in China has just developed an E3 with manual transmission. The electric car itself has a clutch pedal and a gear selector, but it's not actually a real manual transmission. Weird, I know, but apparently it means you can take the test and get a manual license. No petrol burning required. And on that note, we are done for the day. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched, why not consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super simple to make the switch and you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more great videos for you to all enjoy. But until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.